Evening YouTubers, no I am not lost in space. And no, I'm not having a protest about the latest Star Wars films. I haven't even bothered to go and see that Han Solo movie. So there's nothing to protest about from my end. But anyway, on another area of protest, what about this Dev One? Well, if you're like me and you went to have a bit of a look-see around on the interwebs, you would have found that if you go to um, distrowatch.com, okay, you would have found some, in well, I could have gone, no, that's 2700 chess. That would have been a completely different website to go to. But have a look there sometime if you're interested. We could have gone and had a look at the news on Dev1. Okay, so Dev1 has released their ASCII um, version of, and that's version 2, I believe, of the distribution. And let's have a bit of a read here. According to DistroWatch, Dev1 GNU Plus Linux is a Linux distribution forked from Debian in 2015. The project's primary goal is to provide a variant of Debian without the complexities and dependencies of System D. Ooh, that word, System D. And in its system and services manager are originally developed by Red Hat and later adopted by most other Linux distributions, which is true. Most other Linux distributions have invited the wolf well, amongst the packages. Anyway, moving on. Devon's initial beta release was made available in April 2016, never tried it, together with an upgrade path from Debian 7.0 Wheezy and a possibility to switch to Dev1 from Debian 8.0 Jesse. The distribution adopted XFCE as its default desktop. I have XFIS. I presume that's XFIS since it's not in capitalized. I call it XFCE, but XFIS will suffice. Anyway, you can see here's a picture of a what seems to be a an Exfus desktop. Now, why the big deal? Well, you see, there's a lot of incentive to use system D. Okay, I'll show you for example, this is why I had this up. Okay, watch this. So I'm going to go, I can't view in full screen mode at the moment, no, but what I can do is I can actually start it and let's go to full screen nice 1920 by 1080 okay and bang unbooted okay so what's the go that's system d okay and system d has a whole bunch of stuff going on in the back background one of them is concurrent um, booting of processes okay so an it uh, pid1 um, well yeah it does its thing and you end up with uh, a whole bunch of processes running, uh, no guarantee necessarily which order they're going to run in, but nonetheless, they all get run together, attempted to do so anyway, until I think is booted. And it seems to do a fine and dandy job on a typical desktop. Um, in the server environment, not so sure. There are a couple of advantages with system D regarding uh, demonizing uh, servers that just won't demonize. So one of them, for example, is uh, there's some Steam uh, Half-life servers that um, actually make advantage or can make it um, take advantage rather of of system D's uh, demonizing uh, features. So we've got to look at his root, and the normal thing you do is uh, you know system ctl and uh, system system ctl ctl, and uh, you can oh system. Um, I don't know if you can do that. No, you can't do that. All right, um, but you can enable and disable service. So let's see. Let's see. Okay, and you can see a whole bunch of services uh, there. And you know what the WPA supplicant we saw earlier. You can see a whole bunch of stuff going on. Okay, that's fine and dandy. And you can even go to service. And you get that. Okay, which is great. Okay, so what's the big deal? It boots fast. Um, it has a binary logging system called uh, Journal D. You have to use Journal CTL to access the journals. Kind of a bit of a pit. Maybe we can look at that in another video, but I'm not going to go into it right now. But you can see the main selling feature from a user's point of view. Now, I'm not talking about from System D developer's point of view, Leonard Pottering and Tal. I'm talking about from a user's point of view, is the thing boots very, very quickly. Okay, from a standoff, you know, turn off mode. And when people are trying to save power and whatnot, maybe they turn off their machine. I know I have turned off my machine. I heard a lot of people in America don't turn off their machine. Okay, so whatever. Okay, so what did it replace? It replaced CISB in it. Now let's go back and 
let's turn this little beast off now. Okay, and you saw that that shut down nice and quickly as well. Okay, so enter in dev1, which is basically Debian. In this case, I think it's a Debian, is it Debian 9? I presume it's a Debian 8, Debian 9. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, whatever. It's based on a reasonably recent version of, see there's your 2.0 ASCII. So anyway, uh, point of it is anyway, is that going back, it uses sysv init. Okay, so let's just see what that entails. Okay, let's get this thing started. Uh, view full screen. Um, did I do that correctly? Let's have a look. No, I didn't. No wonder. Let's full stop. Okay, this one, start. And close that, and let's get this thing going. Okay, so I'm just going to run that in full screen mode, just like before. It's not as pretty, but whatever. And you're going to see all the bits and bobs going out here. I did it in 1921.080, so you guys can benefit from having a look at the um, the full boot um, dialogue, I guess you could say. And look, that took a little bit of while, didn't it? Mm. So what do I think about that? Okay, well, you know, we can we can still start and stop services. Okay, so okay, so service. And it's 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 there. I mean, this this command is seemingly. I I, I was under the impression anyway that this this command, this service command, comes from um, it comes from system D, um, but it doesn't. And you can see the system CTL command is uh, is not there. Um, and your normal way of doing starting and stopping services. I mean, you can service. What do we got here? Service stop SSH. Service stop SSH. Oh, service. SSH stop perhaps. Okay, and then it does that. Okay, the normal way you used to do things. Let's start that again. You used to go uh, let's see, uh, nip uh, uh, SSH stop, and that's how you used to do things. And it comes up with the same, same stuff. Okay, so fine. The problem is we don't know the status of anything except by way of the fact that Debian seems to have this telling us what's going on, but I don't think that's default behavior. I think that's just Debian making things consistent. Uh, in this case, Dev1 making things consistent um, uh, to the, De the Debian um, parent. So fine, let's get out of here and have a look at OpenRC. So we'll just um, we'll actually turn this guy off, shut down. How long does it take? It's a little bit slower. So we can have a look at that. It's taking a while, it's turning the slim display manager off. Failed anyway, no big deal, it'll turn off anyway. So yeah, it's a little bit slower. Well, a heck of a lot slower actually. So let's have a look at OpenRC. Now the problem, by the way, just talking about sysv init, we don't get any opportunity to run parallelism at boot time. It'll just boot things pretty much in, you know, sequential order. So anyway, we'll close this window and we'll try finally with this guy, but we are going to do a secondary boot. We're just going to do the first boot by default and we'll see what that's like. So this is using OpenRC and you'll see that things are a little bit uh, different when they're displayed. Look at OpenRC, very nice. Uh, I think the current version is actually 0.3 something. Um, and in fact, there's a nice uh, uh, implementation apparently of uh, uh, slash s bin slash in it uh, in 0 0.25 but uh, unfortunately not making it there. The init is actually still provided by sysv init, the actual PID zero. So that wasn't too bad, it wasn't too slow, um, but, and we'll try a shutdown now. We'll shut that thing down, see what things are like. So, oh, um, power button and shut down. It's taken a while, same as before basically, and you can see it'll finally get to stop it. Okay, great. So oh, we're going to start that up again and then we are going to do a reboot, but there's a good reason for that. We're going to run parallelism in a moment. We'll run it in parallelism mode. We'll go the speed demon. 
I uh, first came across this parallel uh, way in OpenRC uh, back in Gentoo. Um, unfortunately, there are actually apparently um, well, there's a bug or two regarding um, uh, boot lockup, and yeah, you can get issues with this. Um, but uh, nonetheless, we will have a go because I've had no issue with it so far. Let's go on here. Now, rc.conf is where you configure this guy. So we're just going to put that in there and we say no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we've done that. Oh, actually, I meant to say yes, didn't I? I'm a fool. Good. All right. So let's have a look at that. I'll reboot this thing. Same story, produces FRC, but you can see some of this text around here is not as nice and orderly as it was when we were doing the sequential boot mode. And it's, you know, marginally quicker. So look, it's nowhere near as quick as uh, what we were seeing with um, system D. Um, now, again, we've got this nice server status all in here, um, but we do have a configuration. As I say, there are a number of um, configuration items in here. Okay, curiously, um, if I go uh, define, actually, we'll just do slash boot slash grub, uh, grub CFG, okay, and I look for init equals, okay, and I don't find it, okay. Whereas, if I go, Let's just go and um, start this guy up. And we'll view here. View full screen. This is the Debian um, 9 uh, that I was using before. You saw that boots nice and quickly. Let's go into here. For um, boot grub, grub .cfg. Okay, and I'll go in it, or in it, nick equals. Does it find it? Well, that's, that's quite curious because on my system, let's see if it says anything about system D. And it doesn't. Okay, so that's kind of curious. So I'll show you why that's curious. Let's actually go to my system and have a bit of a, a look-see because I thought it would actually come up there, but it doesn't. And that's, again, that's quite curious. So how about we close that and we'll close that guy. Okay, so we're going to then um, do grub, grub CFG, and if I go system D, you can see um, init equals. Yeah, I've got this init equals blah 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 blah. Okay, and let's make sure I'm talking about the same kernel. So uh, you name dash a. Here's a 4.9.06, and yeah, you can see that they've got this little init thing talking about system D there. So it's funny that on this one here doesn't, but on my host system it does. Not sure why, I'd have to find out why that might be the case. Now, why would anyone use Dev1? Because they want to basically get away from system D. System D has, you know, um, it has its tentacles into things like GNOME, where it's a de facto dependency. Um, it has, it's sort of making console kit obsolete. Well, console kit makes itself obsolete in a way because it's not being maintained. Um, it has binary logging. So you can in fact um, see if you go and go, um, say no or something like, I don't know, no to system D without system D or whatever. Okay, a whole bunch of reasons in here why someone might not want to use system D. So basically dev1 is giving uh, people a, a way out of uh, using um, system D on their systems on a Debian style system. I mean, even Ubuntu these days uses system D after the whole upstart fiasco and, you know, basically Mark Shuttleworth had to back down and because upstream Debian was using system D from now on. 
uh, Ubuntu into the system D once that decision had been handed down. So anyway, basically I just wanted to show you uh, about uh, Dev1 using um, you know, either SysV and NIT, OpenRC. I believe it does actually use a whole bunch of, um, you know, uh, it has the potential to use a whole bunch of other NITs uh, out there. You can actually see uh, features of uh, init systems, uh, probably in Wikipedia, um, you know, comparison of init systems, or maybe init, hopefully we can find something in there. But there's some kind of interesting things about, so you've got systemd supporting all these things, and OpenRC supports a whole bunch of uh, things. Um, oh, yeah, there's the whole cross-service dependencies, parallel startup service, yes. But there is a bug against that. It's optional to uh, in systemd. It's not optional. You actually have to do it. Nonetheless, parallelism didn't really speed things up too much, I found, in, um, in practice with OpenRC. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm going to kind of leave it here. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, basically show you um, you know, about, about this, uh, and, uh, whether you'd like to use dev one or not, I guess I'll leave that to you. If you'd like to leave something in the comment section below, that's great. Uh, if you like this video, please press that like button or alternatively, you know where to go. And the other thing as well is that uh, if you want to receive more of this content, remember to, uh, content, I should say, press the subscribe button and ding the bell to receive notifications. Oh, and one last thing before I close out. Yes. OpenRC does use SysB init. Um, it can for PID1. Anyway, guys, bye now. I hope you enjoy your day.